WD18 outside Vicarage Road, Watford 1, West Ham 3, Shane not good enough once again, bottom of the league, seven goals conceded, one scored, not good at all and frankly I'm quite worried. Mm. Yeah, three defeats on the bounce, um, this season that is obviously, yeah. we're not going to carry on, we're, gonna, we're not going to talk about it next season, oh, sorry last season. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I was, I was more frustrated last Saturday really against Everton. I felt like, all right, if things had gone our way, maybe we maybe would have we, we would have got a point. Today I'm just it's just it's a fucking shit show is what it is. I mean everything. I it's just oh it was such a painful thing. I mean first of all the game started off okay. We went off on the front foot, Delafoe got taken out, didn't he? Um, apparently Sky Sports was saying that, that was apparently a penalty. Should have been a penalty. There were reasons why that should have been given. Um, then they got the other end Lanzini gets brought down. Bad, bad challenge though. I mean, and Lanzini, you know, very, very silky feet as it were, goes down and they get the penalty. They go one nil up, and you know, they take advantage of the early kind of play and the early kind of possession. But I'm really, I'm actually the one thing I'm glad about today is actually we kind of got back into the game today. Um, kind of went forward. Atmosphere was good today. You know, when we, when we went one nil down, kind of rallied. Good ball through by Will Hughes and Andre Gray. Good finish. The kind of finish we expect from Andre Gray. Um, and yeah, first goal scored. Yay! Um, good goal as well. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a good finish. It was a good finish. Um, kind of, as I said, Andre Gray-esque, and you know, I expected him to kind of finish that. So good that he did. Went in at half time, one all. Um, kind of made them sweat a little bit towards the end of that. In a lot of added on time, obviously for the water break and stuff. Um, <laughs> And then second half, I said, I said to people, you know, second half, I thought, yeah, do you know, what? if we just take it to them, it'll be fine. You know, if we take it to them, it'll be good. We went on a huge spell of possession. We were going forward. I was like, you know, the rookery were really getting behind them. Um, but the game pivoted on two crucial moments. The first one was a big chance for Will Hughes. It's a huge chance, and I mean. Yeah, uh, you know, it's all this stuff about, oh, you know, left foot, right foot, he's weaker on this foot, weaker on the right foot, weaker on his head, I don't really give a shit, you should be scoring that. I'm sorry, it's, just, it's simple as that, you're a professional footballer, mate, you should be scoring that. It's a tapping. It's not you, can tell, you can tell as well, his head was down. His head, his, his head was down, he was, he was going to be taken off anyway. I got the feeling he was going to be taken off regardless of whatever happened, because it's either him or it's either Dunn of who goes off. Two of them went off, um, but what I'm really quite annoyed about today, and... Javi deserves a bit of 50-50 today. First of all, he did change things up when we had to, before the game. Too late? No, before the game. Before the game. Before I, by way of the formation. Yeah, good. One up top. Wasn't too sure about all that, but I thought, okay, do you know what? At least he's trying to make a change of some sort. Um, during the game, though, fucking awful. I mean, how can you wait that long to make those changes? It's, you know, come on, those changes should be made at one all. One all, you bring on Welbeck, you bring on Saar. You, you bring on Keener too late. You know, you give him, give him a chance at least. I mean, you know, what are you saving these players for? You know, have we got some sort of private match tomorrow or something that we don't all know about? It's ridiculous. Should have brought the changes on early. And I'm starting to actually get people saying, you know, I'm worried. I'm more worried about Javi at the moment because I don't know why he's waiting so long to make changes. It's been a, it's been a common thread. But because we just had a, such a good season last season, that was kind of swept under the carpet. Late changes, but we got the win. Late changes, but we need to freshen things up. But it's okay because we're on this FA Cup run. Blah, 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 blah. I don't care. The FA Cup is now done. The FA Cup is now gone. This is a huge hangover. I don't know what's going on. I... And then ultimately, one all. The changes should have been made. They weren't made. We're standing on the sidelines for an eternity. Um, and then West Ham get their third goal. Second goal, fine. On the break. Tapping um, their guy, um, Haller. And then third goal, a great finish by Haller. I should, I should, I should just say that. It's a... It, it's a bicycle kick. It's a brilliant finish. Uh, great save though by Foster. I think it was for all, was it for Ogbonna's header possibly. Yeah. Um, good yeah. save, but then Haller just scores it. West Ham fans go mad because ultimately, I'm, I've got to be really honest, West Ham was sweating in that second half. There was a huge period to play whereby they weren't having any of the ball. There were no chances in the area. Two shots, two goals, three points. And three goals for them overall on a really disappointing afternoon for us. Um, do questions have to be asked of Javi, Shane? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Um, I would like to think that a manager who got us to a cup final will be given more time. I don't think that's going to happen. I think right now, standing here on a Saturday evening, we play Coventry here at the Vic on Tuesday night. Big game, I think it is. We want to make progress in the League Cup. 
Um, of course, we're doing the cup competitions. What kind of side do you play for that? That's the big question now. What would I do? I would personally put in a big mixture of different players. I put in players like Kina. I put in players like Cassidy. Players who I think have actually made a big impact in the under 23. That sunny blue low Everton guy should be given a chance. I don't know why they're not. I don't know why they're just so segregated away from everything else. Because the first team right now are not fucking performing. It just needs, that just needs to be said. And then it's Saturday, next Saturday against Newcastle, where um, I sadly won't be at the game because um, I'll have died making my way up 25,000 steps. So, <laughs> and at this rate, I might as fucking well, to be honest, because we need to beat Newcastle. We need to, we need to get the three points minimum now. We need to at least end the month on a high. But the problem with Newcastle, again, is the kind of game where, but yeah, we should, we should be getting three points from that. We should be pushing them. They haven't, I think they're still stuck on zero points. They play Spurs away tomorrow. Chances are they'll probably stay on that. That's a big game. Both sides on no points going into that game. That's a big one as well. And Newcastle fans, you know, if we start getting annoyed, you know, I also know we're, we get annoyed by our, you know, by our team's performances. Newcastle fans get fucking anal about some of that stuff. And, you know, it's going to be a proper battle up there. Um, and then next month, pretty much, it's just Arsenal at home, Man City away, Wolves away. And that's going to lead me to getting out the bleach and just drinking it all in one. Because how many points are we really going to get from that? I mean, Arsenal at home here. I said this to you now. I said this to you on the first game of the season. It's the games that Arsenal we need to be trying to get points from here. Can you imagine if Arsenal turn up here now? Aubameyang, Pepe, there lads, get a cut Dawson like paper. Like, I don't know, our defence is woeful. Kiko Femini is not good enough. Uh, two centre-backs not good enough. Mm. Holobas looks like a fucking like, drug donkey out there on the ball. You don't know what he's doing. He went in some really, really feisty challenges on there. A couple of tackles I thought went in. If he doesn't, if he doesn't get the ball, he gets the man. It's an instant yellow card. But collectively as a unit, Shane, it's not good enough. No, collectively not, not good enough. The communication just isn't there. It's just not there. Um, uh, I'm, I'm worried. I'm bitterly worried. And listen, look, I was, I was worried against Brighton, you know, and all the fallout from all of that. But now I don't think we've got any right to complain and to moan and to sit there and say, oh, it's early days in the season. You know, we've only scored one goal. We've conceded seven goals. How can you, how can you not be worried by this? How can you seriously not be worried? It's not a case of, oh, it'll be all right in the end. No, it's not. The Premier League's getting tougher. Look at results that came on today. Look at Palace, man. They've won. They've beaten United. Teams are progressing. Teams are improving. New signings are getting off to good starts for their club. And our two new signings are standing there on the bench and getting 70k a week for 20 minutes. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. We go again next week. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. You know, as fans, we can all turn up or, or make the noise. But at the end of the day, I can make as much noise as I want to and I can scream and shout and let it all out. But players have got to put in a performance and they just haven't done that a lot. First, first three games of the season, they haven't done that. You know, Everton, yeah, there were some positives, but overall, still crap. Today, still shit. Um, because he didn't get another set of goals. But we move on. Um, something's got to change. And I do fear for Javi. If we don't... All right, Coventry, I think, is slightly different. If we don't beat Newcastle, I think it's... I think Javi's, I think, I think Javi's staring, staring down the barrel. I really do. And it's the best time to get rid of a manager. Why? Because it's international break after Newcastle. Two weeks off. Arsenal back here. Fresh enthusiasm, maybe, for the players. Who knows? One thing I want to say I want to end on is the players didn't come over today to thank the fans. Um, I don't care what the result was. You always come over. You always clap the fans. You always get at least one or two players coming over. You should absolutely be doing that. Absolutely. I don't care. There are fans here that don't have the luxury of living in like a half an hour radius of this place. Fans do travel to these matches. They put a lot of time out. It's a beautiful weather today. Yeah. You know. Just sulked off down the tunnel, every single one of them. Um, same as well for Everton. I think Troy and Cathcart only came over. Um, rest of them just soaked off down the tunnel. It's disgraceful and I don't care. Oh, you know, they didn't put in the performance. They shouldn't come over. You know, our fans are not grateful. Don't care. You should always come over and thank the fans. Home, away, whatever. You should always be doing that. That was disappointing to see today. Kapu, as well as captain, should really be kind of be saying in the year, come on, go over there and thank the fans. Troy, Troy would have done it. If Troy, and if none of the players did it, when Troy told them to do it, Troy would at least go over and do it himself. And that shows a little bit, little bit of responsibility as well as a captain. Um, I'm not going to get into individual players today because if I do, I'll be here all night. But We'll see you next week. Defence were poor. And stuff needs to change, man. But I'm worried. There's a hornet. Very, very worried. The appropriate way to win. <laughs> Top man, Shay. Thanks for coming along.